got another short little video here for you. This one here is about this very inexpensive eyepiece I bought on eBay. Uh, it's called Angel Eyes, and this one is a 27 millimeter, and it's advertised as super wide angle, and it's a one and a quarter inch eyepiece, so it's not a two inch. And uh, it has an apparent field of view of 70 degrees, which basically just means it's a much wider view. If you took a 27 millimeter eyepiece that was say a Plossel, those are usually around 50 degrees apparent field of view. So this one here, the idea is it gives you the same power, but just gives you a wider view. And I paid about $45 for this. And so, you know, when I bought it, I was like, eh, I don't know what's going to happen. And I got it in the mail and opened it up. And I was like, hey, this thing looks pretty nice. I was impressed. I was surprised. And uh, it uh, comes with an eyepiece. It's a cap for the top. And it also has a cap for the bottom, which I've got in the box right at the minute. And uh, for a rubber eye cup, this piece actually threads in and out, which I was really surprised to see that a lot of them either don't have any cup at all, or it's just a real soft rubber one, especially for an inexpensive eyepiece. I was really surprised to see that. But uh, let's see, it's got those two pieces. And actually comes in a box that looks halfway decent. Here's the rubber cup for the bottom part of the eyepiece. And I haven't used it. It's, it came with a little bitty microfiber cleaning cloth. And um, the reason I ended up buying the eyepiece, I've got a... 180 millimeter uh, Maxitov telescope. It's got like 2700 millimeter focal length. So it's given you real small areas of the sky. And when you first get going trying to set up, it can be kind of a pain to find things. And that particular telescope won't take a two inch eyepiece. Uh, the newer Maxitovs like that do, but this one here, I picked it up used, and it was one of the first ones they had made, I guess. And uh, it only does one and a quarter. So it's just a little harder to get started, but it's meant to be a high-power telescope, so that's just part of it. But I thought, well, hey, you know, this thing here, I saw it, and I got on, like, a Telescopius web website to where you can uh, use their toolbox option and go to a telescope simulator and then you can either plug in like a camera size or an eyepiece and it'll tell you how big the view is and you can even put objects in there you know if you want to see how big M13 was or whatever and I thought hey okay this is really does pretty decent because see I have a 32 millimeter plossel that's one and a quarter and that thing I always thought was pretty decent in a lot of telescopes, but when I put it in the uh, Maxitov, it was terrible. It's like vignetting or something. And I finally came to the conclusion that maybe part of it, an inch and a quarter diameter barrel is, when you go to metric, it's around 30 millimeters. I forget the exact number. But I realized it's like, okay, if you go larger than that, then maybe you're seeing the uh, sides of the barrel. Because you don't usually see an eyepiece in a one and a quarter design where the focal length is more than an inch and a quarter. There are some. You can buy a 40 millimeter, and I've never had one. Some people love them. I've heard other people that say that if you bought something like this, you would get a field of view that was the same size 
but your magnification would be a lot higher. So you'd actually be seeing the same area of sky, but it would be larger. So I thought, okay, since I, you know, wasn't too excited about the way the 32 was, I was afraid to buy a 40 for that. But this is really cool. And one thing that's interesting, the uh, super wide angle idea, it's kind of like, it's a little bit wider than what your eye can see when you look down the barrel. It's kind of like, if, you know, if you walk through a doorway into a room and you're staring straight ahead, you see a certain amount of area, but then you can kind of look off to the left or to the right and to the left to see more. And that's actually kind of what I noticed in here, and I'd seen someone else write that in a review. So I'd look down the middle, and at first it seemed almost like a normal view, but if I'd kind of peer a little to the sides, there was quite a bit more there, and uh, it was decent looking too, because some eyepieces, when you get real wide, they get start getting what people call coma, or a spherical aberration, where the stars start getting kind of elongated, and I didn't notice anything like that anyway when I did it, I mean, it's possible that it's there, but for $45, I was really surprised and I'm really happy with this eyepiece.